Ethiopian have died at the hands of communist persecutors. Who knows how many have died in guerrilla conflicts. And since the advent of the atomic bomb in 1945, mankind has lived in the shadow of nuclear holocaust, which could destroy all life on the earth. Prior to the middle of the 20th century, many of the events described in Revelation could not have been possible except through supernatural means. However, now, with the advent of nuclear and biological weapons, many of these prophesied horrors of mass destruction appear imminent. Mankind has the capacity to inflict the kind of mass devastation and carnage that the ancient prophets of the Bible predicted. The prophet Zechariah said in Zechariah 14:12 that the armies that invade Israel in the final battle will be smitten with a plague which will cause the flesh to melt off of the soldiers' bones while they stand on their feet, their tongues to consume away in their mouths, and their eyes to consume away in their sockets. This is an exact description of what happens to human flesh when exposed to the effects of a neutron bomb explosion. We have to remember that even though the Soviet Union as such has broken up, they still have the most awesome military machine in the history of the world, even stronger than the United States. And the real question and the real danger today is who's going to control that? They still have the nuclear weapons to destroy the whole Western civilization in 30 minutes. In fact, bring devastation upon the whole world. They have over 30,000 thermonuclear warheads with the ability to deliver them. Right now, we do not know where their Typhoon-class submarines are. Most of them are at sea, and we have no idea where they are. Each one of those Typhoon-class submarines, as the hunt for Red October ended at, carry enough warheads to destroy 200 cities. The Typhoon-class submarines considered by the experts as the ultimate weapon. And they had a 2 to 1 majority and still built 30 more, where they have 90 against our 30-some-odd. So why are they doing this? Clearly, they have a, an agenda quite independent of the rhetoric and the, the, the facade of the disarmament that we so foolishly uh, take at face value. A four megaton warhead can ionize the whole Los Angeles basin. And when I say ionize, it means you would not even be able to tell one building material from another. Now, they have some nuclear weapons in places like Kazakhstan, which is a Muslim province, that have 25 megaton warheads on it. Now, the world has never seen what a 25 megaton warhead could do. As a matter of fact, some military planners wonder why would anyone ever build such a thing, since a four megaton warhead would vaporize a city like Los Angeles. We claimed victory too soon, said Robert Shope, professor of epidemiology at the Yale University School of Medicine. He added that the danger of infectious disease has not only not gone away, it's getting worse. In addition to the out-of-control AIDS virus and the ever-expanding number of hepatitis cases, deaths during the final decade of the 20th century have skyrocketed from vaccine immune strains of TB, cholera, pneumonic plague, E. coli, Ebola, hantavirus, and strep A, the flesh-eating bacteria. Incredibly, according to an AP report from Atlanta, more than two million Americans each year are infected with the deadly staph bacteria after simply visiting our modern antiseptic hospitals. This results in 60 to 80,000 deaths per year, more than the number of American casualties from the entire Vietnam War. Diseases like tuberculosis, meningitis, pneumonia, and various types of sexually transmitted diseases were thought to have been eliminated with the advent of effective modern antibiotics. But today, they've re-emerged as antibiotic-resistant strains, which are again threatening the human population. And we have no new medicines with which to counteract their spread. One need only look at the sharp increase in earthquake activity during the latter part of the 20th century to see exactly what Jesus meant when he said these disasters would increase in number and intensity prior to the seven-year tribulation. From 1890 to 1900, there was only one earthquake recorded anywhere in the world with a magnitude of 6.0 or greater. From 1900 to 1910, there were three such killer earthquakes. 
From 1910 to 1930, there were four. And from 1930 to 1940, there were five. Thirteen were recorded from 1940 to 1970. Fifty-six were recorded from 1970 to 1980. From 1980 to 1990, there were 310. And then there was an incredible increase during just the first half of the 1990s when 747 killer earthquakes were recorded. In addition, volcanic eruptions, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, and famines have all increased with unbelievable and dramatic severity in recent years. The rise in earthquakes is just catastrophic. For example, each decade outperforms the number of earth killer earthquakes in the decade before it. It's almost like we're getting ready for what Hollywood calls the big one. Well, I got news for Hollywood. According to Bible prophecy, there are two big ones coming. And uh, the earthquake shakes of the future are just catastrophic. Jesus compared the way things would be during these prophesied times with the period of the biblical prophet Noah. In Noah's day, the earth's population had become so immoral that the Bible says the thoughts of men were continually evil. Noah tried to warn those around him of the impending judgment of a global flood, but sadly, no one believed. Could the decaying moral climate today be just one more indication that the judgments of the tribulation are right around the corner? Paul to Timothy talks about uh, 18 different signs in the last days, perilous times should come, and then he describes our modern era as far as moral insanity is concerned, how the people will be heady and high-minded and lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, denying the, the power thereof, uh, disobedient to parents, and you have the conflict between parents and children and so on. That whole catalog of sins is very specific. And when you read it in the Bible, and you read the New York Times or the Los Angeles Times, you, you begin to recognize that we are living in the fulfillment of those very days, the, the attack on our moral culture. I think what we're seeing in America is a very definite decline in the culture into a, a coarseness almost into what uh, I would call a new dark ages. Dr. Francis Schaeffer, in his speech many years ago, made the statement that we are now living in a post-Christian era. This is uh, being brought about through the major universities of America. It's being brought about by a left-leaning secular humanistic media the Christian value system has been basically marginalized in our society as not being the basis for right thinking, morality, etc. The sheer number of false religions available to the spiritual seeker today is staggering. There was an explosion of sorts during the latter part of the 20th century as Eastern religious ideas wrapped in Western or even Christian terminology poured into our culture. The resulting so-called New Age movement became the vehicle for the proponents of the coming One World Religion. It's interesting that today, among all the major movements, we see a, a, a trend, a drive towards a universality of religion. The New Age is the current packaging of some of the old ideas that originally started in Babylon, but today it masquerades under new trappings called the New Age. But we're called mediums, we're not called channelers, and so forth. We see uh, all kinds of movements in Islam, in Catholicism, in, in, in the classical Protestant denominations, and the New Age, groping for common ground. One of the great characteristics of the end time will be spiritual deception that will come upon people. There will be events that will mislead people, but the basic form of spiritual subversion that will come upon the world strongly is doctrines of demons, false doctrine. And it seems to be a characteristic of troubled times like these that false messiahs grow out of the circumstances of life and are quickly accepted by people who are looking for something to believe in, something to trust, and something to commit their lives to. Religious leaders from all over the world, including Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, snake worshippers, and witch doctors, joined together with the Pope in Assisi during the late 1980s to pray for political world peace. 